the fact that Netflix is down the most since April 2022, clearly people had some anxiety around the fact that the revenue just doesn't seem to be following the uptick in subscriptions. Yeah, I think it speaks to, I mean, let's be clear. Netflix had a really great quarter. When we're looking at Netflix's previous quarters, this is the kind of uptick that we were hoping to see from Netflix. But that softer revenue is concerning. It's only concerning if we think about this in terms of that ARM number, that average revenue per member. Other companies refer to this as typical ARPU, that average revenue per user. And so we see that 3% decline year over year. Now that we know that as Netflix tries to onboard these new subscribers, right, it's where we see that nice subscriber growth in the most recent quarter. The question is, what are revenue are they generating from these customers that now have different pricing options? They can come in at a cheaper ad tier, which actually is better for Netflix overall on the arm front because of that advertising revenue alongside the subscription revenue is really strong. But in a lot of these countries where they're experimenting with the password sharing crackdown and where they're looking at how to kind of increase their subscribers and leading into this immense demand that they see across their portfolio, the question is, are these members coming in at a cheaper plan that maybe does not include subscribers? We know that Netflix includes options, for example, in Latin America, for some of these subscribers who are getting kicked off their parents' plans or getting kicked off their friends' plans to go in and say, hey, I want to come in at a, a cheaper uh, tier for, for the service. And so how much revenue is Netflix really mm. generating on average across these different subscribers is going to be the long-term question. I think that's why you see Spencer and you see Greg and you see uh, Ted Sarandos, the co-CEOs, Greg Peters and Ted Sarandos, speak to this really important aspect of pushing people towards the advertising tier, taking away certain plans like these basic yes. ad-free plans, right? And kind of moving into this idea of having a better position pricing power to really generate the revenue that they need, especially as they kind of level out content spending. So, Julia, they did do that, of course, in the UK and the US, countries where people, of course, can afford the uptick, can decide, OK, I'll go for the ad-supported cheaper model or I'll have to pay more to get ad-free. What do they do about emerging markets? How do they ensure that they can have the revenue they need from areas that they're still able to grow in, ultimately? I think what's really smart about Netflix's plan, and let's be clear, I think there would actually be more of a concern if the arm didn't change in part because Netflix was not experimenting with its pricing power. I think the fact that Netflix is saying we're going to experiment with pricing power, we're going to experiment in markets that we know local content is really important, and we know that customers don't necessarily have the disposable income that customers in the U.S., the U.K., Canada tend to have. We really want to figure out how we can be the local dominant entertainment source in all these different countries, right? Where Netflix is trying to monopolize attention is not just as a global distributor of one type of content, but being a local powerhouse and then sitting under this global umbrella that is Netflix. And so when we think about that, what Netflix is really, I think, building is this idea of having a prestige type of platform, a premium platform, and then a casual platform. And the casual platform and the premium platform, unlike in other companies where that might be limited access to certain titles, whether that might be um, uh, the inability to actually access certain things on the platform. We think about how Peacock has Premium Plus, how HBO Max, how they differentiate between the ad-free platform and the ad-supported platform. Netflix is taking this as, into account of, well, if we, get, a, if we um, get rid of these basic plans that don't have advertising and we can make up that kind of ever, average revenue per member by bringing people into that ad-free plan, uh, sorry, that ad-supported plan, and then continuing to build upon that and actually bringing in additional revenue, then in these markets where we can keep our pricing really low and see increased household penetration, especially in markets yeah. like India or parts of Europe where the linear and paid TV system is still pretty fundamental. These are countries where they don't necessarily need streaming. Internet access is still being developed in, in many ways, or they're still kind of moving on to that, those, those types of plans. Netflix is saying, we know that we need to penetrate, and we know that that is our first uh, a goal. If you look yeah. at a country like India where they're seeing strong penetration, but they're taking it at a, at a stronger loss on the revenue front. And unlike Disney, who's, saying, who's suggesting uh, with Bob Iger's recent comments, we might move out of this market a little bit. You have Netflix saying, we really want to double down. How can we use two different pricing power plans globally to ensure that our revenue does not kind of see these consistent slowdowns as we bring on these new customers? Julia, what about content? Because... What's interesting is, is perhaps Netflix less exposed to some of the strikes here in the United States because they can make much more content locally in these local markets? Yeah, I mean, you know, just some quick data points from our firm, Parrot Analytics. You know, Netflix leads the pack when it comes to de on-platform demand share. And what that really suggests to us is this ability to 
retain customers. This idea that when people are looking at an entire platform across original and licensed programming, where are they spending the majority of their time? Netflix has actually beaten out Hulu in Q1 2023. In Q2, it beat out HBO Max, again, now Max, and with those combined Discovery Plus Max assets. And so Netflix still is kind of the home in many ways, right. especially in the United States, to a lot of these customers. Where Netflix is most insulated is that Netflix has two or three main advantages. It has this global pipeline, and we've seen demand for global yes. content increase. Now, I want to be very clear here. The story of Squid Game should not be that Netflix can create global hits on the fly. It should be that they can create really strong local hits that might be able to find audiences outside of those territories well and therefore increase the revenue that they, that they originally had planned for that. 